Hi everybody. I was on Facebook today and I came across an article that I just found absolutely fascinating. And I started to write a comment and then I was like, I'm gonna write a book in this comment section. So that's silly to do. So basically I thought I'd make a video about it and I haven't made a video in a long time. So um, here we go. So it's it was a repost onto ABMA, Animal Behavior Management Alliance. And it's, you know, Animal ABMA is basically like zoo, you know, zoo members and uh, it's an organization. They have a, an annual um, conference and everything. It's kind of a cool thing. And they've been getting into more dog training stuff. I think because there's a lot of dog trainers that are their membership. And so they've been getting involved in that and posting things. But they posted something from Jean Donaldson, who's a very well-known positive reinforcement trainer. She wrote The Culture Clash, which is a very popular book. Um, she's written a lot of books. Uh, she's like one of the leaders. You, you've heard me talk about that before, like the leaders of the dog training industry. Um, she's like one of them. And they'll, you know, if you get into a talk with any positive reinforcement trainer, they'll, they'll she's like, like a god to them. But um, she wrote something and then a ABMA reposted it. And so that's why I was kind of on my, my radar a little bit. So she, Jean Donaldson wrote the top 10 myths about dogs. And it's a fascinating list. Uh, and I'll go through each myth. There's 10 myths. Uh, it's on my computer right now. That's why I'm looking at it. But there's 10 myths. Um, the funny thing about these myths is most of them aren't myths. If I was to write a myth list, it would be very common things. So things that 50% of the audience would say, oh yeah, I, I thought that, or I've, I've heard that before. Most of these are, are not myths. It's, it's, I, don't, I don't know what she's doing with this. I think she, so. She's making myths up. Is what's happening. She's kind of saying, "I have a, I have a, an agenda, or I have something I want to get across. So I'm going to kind of make a myth, and then debunk the fake myth." Is what she's doing. So I'm going to, I'm going to start reading them, and I'll go through each one of them. Okay, and some I agree with. By the way, uh, I think there's one or two that I agree with. So this myth, myth. If you give dogs chew toys, they'll learn to chew everything. That's the myth. And then here's what she says. Truth, dogs are excellent discriminators and readily learn to distinguish their toys from forbidden items with minimal training. I've never heard anyone ever say, if you give dogs chew toys, they'll learn to chew everything. That's not even a thing. I've heard of everything. I own one of the largest dog training companies in California. Um, people, I've had calls about, I had a call about a guy getting carjacked. He, he got shot. He went into the hospital. His dog then hates him. After he got to the hospital, his dog hates him. Probably the associations were the Pavlovian response from being shot and the trauma. That would be my guess. And he called me and said, my dog now hates me. What should I do? And this is years ago. My point in that story, I've heard it all. Like, like I've dealt with the craziest things ever. I get called. All day I'm dealing with calls from people. I've never heard, and the clients have told me everything. I've never heard a client say that to me. When I'm giving my chew toy talk and I give it to everybody, no client's ever said, yeah, but if you won't, he learn to, no one thinks that. So it's like a weird myth. Okay, so that's one of the myths. So I got nine more. I'll try to keep this brief. Playing tug of war makes dogs aggressive. Now, this is a common question, actually. Um, this is one I, I agree with. Now, the clients generally don't say it makes my dog aggressive. Okay, so the myth says playing tug or makes dogs aggressive. Truth, there is no evidence that this is so. Tug is a cooperative behavior directed at stimulated prey, the toy. All right, so I agree with this one. This is a good one. Um, most people don't say, well, it make them aggressive. They kind of, but here's what I say about tug of war. I say, um, you should be able to get the thing back. So train to drop it. Or whatnot but um so so that one i agree with all right miss seven punishing punish dogs for growling or else they'll become aggressive oh punish dogs for growling or else they'll become aggressive that's the myth punish them okay the, and then she says the truth dogs growl because something that is upsetting them is too close if you punish them for informing us of this they are still upset but now not letting us know ian dummer calls this removing the ticker from the time bomb. All right. So this is very common. This is a, 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 uh, this is something I deal with all the time. I work with a lot of aggressive dogs. 
Back in my early days, I would have said never punish precursors, okay? Precursors to aggression, growls and whatnot. Here's the truth. I don't use shot collars to punish. Punishment is the scale, right? There's horrible, worst thing ever over here. There's neutral, then there's super punishing, keeps going. Then there's super reinforcing, keeps going. It's a continuum, okay? Something's out here. I would not use a shot collar at 10. I don't use shot collars, but I wouldn't use a shot collar at 10 to punish a growl. So to that point, she's right, okay? I would, however, say, knock it off, dude. And I do every single day to dogs that I work with. They're both punishment. One will completely extinguish the growl. I don't want to do that because the dog still hates the other dog. That's my big problem with some methods. Me saying, hey, as the boss, saying, knock it off. I deal with dogs all the time that are kind of jerky. Like dog trainers are always like, oh, he's just, he's just aggressive because he's fearful. No, they're just like there are jerky people and jerky kids. There are dogs who just growl because they've been conditioned to growl, because the owners have let it go. Because, you know, and I say it all the time, being anthropomorphic, I'm like, it's, that's a jerk move. It's not cool to just, that might, the, dog, the other dog's not doing anything. Your dog's not scared. He's just saying, get out of here. I don't want anything to do with you. It's not cool. It's not cool in the pe people world. Not cool in the dog world. All right, so you get it? Yes, I would not turn a shot collar to 10 and light the dog up when it growls. But I will punish a growl. Here's neutral. I will go right here with the punishment. I won't go out here, if that makes sense. So she's, you know, I get what she's trying to do here. Um, she's basically saying never punish a growl. No, you can punish a growl. Okay. All right. Next one. I'm going over here. If you pat your dog when he's afraid, you're rewarding the fear. That's the myth. Then she says, the truth, if, t uh, this is a weird example, by the way. If terrorists, terrorists enter a bank and order everybody down on the floor, the people will exhibit fearful behavior. Okay, then she goes on. If I then give one of the bank customers a compliment, 20 bucks or chocolates, is this going to make them more afraid of terrorists next time? So basically, if I was reading this as a normal person, I would discount this whole thing because the, the explanation is like the most random weird explanation ever. The whole terrorist giving of chocolates thing. Like, like that's a weird thing. So, but I get what she's getting at. If you pat your dog when he's afraid, I deal with this all the time. People go, or trainers often go, you can't, they, they all say this, you can't reward fear, okay? Now, I kind of agree with that, but it, it, everything's situational. I will not sit there and just stroke dogs when they're fearful. Just like sit there and just go, oh my gosh, you're gonna be okay. It's okay, everything's fine. Like that's too much, right? You, it's just, I don't know if you're rewarding the fear. I don't know what's going on. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of sort of human dog relationship stuff that if you sit there and you just stroke them, you're gonna cause weirdness in the dog, okay? That does not mean that you sit there and go, yeah, fireworks, you're terrified, get used to it, buddy. Like there's a middle of the road there, you know? Um, it's like kids, I mean, you raise kids. Sometimes they're nervous and you go, you're, you're a big boy, you're, you'll be fine, you're a big girl. Uh, you'll, you'll be all right, get over it, okay? Um, it happens and there's a time to say, come here, you're gonna be fine, I love you. Yes, okay, let's get out of this situation. It's too scared, whether it's a kid or a dog. Um, but again, it's sort of this overreaching. She's trying to debunk this whole, this whole, you know, you know, this whole reinforcing fear thing. But, you know, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird way to put it. Here's a good one. Rewards, the myth, rewards are bribes and thus compromise relationships. That's the myth, the truth. A mountain of evidence from decades of research in pure and applied settings has demonstrated over and over that positive reinforcement, i.e. rewards, makes relationship better, not worse. All right, I've heard a thousand times rewards or bribes from clients. They don't actually say that, but they, they, they sort of don't like it, the reward thing, a lot. They've never said that it compromises relationships, though. So, so rewards are kind of bribes. That's okay, I use them. 
but let's not act like they're not, they're, 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 they're a reinforcement. I mean, they're kind of do this instead of this. Look at me instead of lunging at the dog. I mean, it's kind of a bribe. It's okay. It's okay to say that. She's basically saying, oh, they're not bribes. I mean, she's trying to say they're not bribes, but and they compromise the relationship. This again, it's a fake man. No one's ever said that. I, I don't know a trainer who even says rewards would compromise relationships. Trainers don't like rewards, but it's not because it compromises relationship. It's because they don't always work. Treats are rarely a good enough enticer to get the dog from lunging and barking at dogs. Distance is not even, you create distance, give a bunch of treats, dog still gets more reinforcement from lunging and barking than it does from jackpotting. Treat, 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 treat with hot dogs. It's usually more reinforcing to do the lunging behavior than it is this. So it's a matter of reinforcement. But it's like, it's again, it's not a myth. No one's ever said that. Here's a myth. Dogs have an innate desire to please. She thinks that's a myth. And she says the truth, dogs like all properly functioning animals are motivated by food, water, sex, play, and access to bonded relationships. Dogs have an innate desire to please. So this is, she's getting into a really gray area here. She acts like, like all properly functioning animals. So dogs are unique. I've worked with lions and whales and wolves and they're different. It's different. Dogs kind of do have an innate desire to please actually. It's different. Um, acting like dogs are like those animals is not, it's not true. Dogs are, dogs are different. The dog human relationship is like nothing else on this earth. It is a, it is a crazy, weird, special thing. So to act like, ah, oh, they're just like, a, it's any proper, she says properly functioning animal. No, nah, dude, it's different. Um, dogs kind of do. So this is just, you know, Again, though, I've never heard anyone even kind of say it that way. I guess I have heard dog people say it's an innate desire to please, but it's kind of true, they do. Here's another myth. In multi-dog households, support the hierarchy by giving presumed dominant animals padding, treats, etc. first, before giving presumed subordinate animals. Okay. And she says the truth. There is no evidence that this has any impact on inter-dog relationships or any type of aggression. No valuable conditioning effects are achieved by giving the presumed high-ranking dog goodies first. All right, the last part is right. The whole, the rest of it is like we just kind of talk. The last part is right. There is no higher. There is no value conditioning effect or achieved by giving the presumed higher ranking dog goodies first. In fact, I do the opposite. I give the dominant animal reinforcement last. Okay, if they're on the line, I don't always do this, but because you usually don't need to, but they're on the line and there is some hierarchy there, dominance hierarchy, which I'm gonna get comments just based on saying that, but just saving the time, guys. Let's not get into this. You'll lose. But I give the dominant animal last. Boom, 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 dominant animal. My dog is the boss. I don't use, I don't do this again. But anyway, I don't do this a lot. But um, say thank you, here's your reinforcement. Thank you for letting all these animals eat. That's kind of with social animals, um, with killer whales, that's the way we did it. I kind of do it with dogs. But she's kind of trying to, she's trying to kind of trying to debunk the dominant dominance thing, which is actually a lot of these. A couple more of these myths are trying to do that. Um, but it's just kind of a lot of talk, I, I think. Um, we don't have time on here to totally dive into every one of these. If you let, here's a myth, if you let dogs exit doorways ahead of you, you're letting them be dominant. Truth, there's no evidence that the behavior of going through a doorway has any social significance whatsoever. I totally agree with this one. Um, if you let dogs, and people have actually said that to me. They've said, oh, if my dog goes, through, so this is a real myth. I love this myth, she's right. If you let dogs go ahead of you, you're letting them be dominant. They've, they've said that to me word for word. Probably hundreds of people have said that to me. That's a myth. Um, and I say the same thing. I go, your dog just, your dog didn't, it's not about dominance. Your dog just wants to leave the house. And that's why they're leaving first. There's a big, crazy, exciting world out there and they've been in the house all day. They're just trying to leave the house. Now, having said that, 
that doesn't mean you let the dog go in front of you. Not because it's dominance, but because you're setting the tone for walk. I deal with leash reactivity all day sometimes. Every client that comes to me, their dog's barking, lunging on the, on the leash. Setting the tone at the house is how you get your dog not to bark and lunge, one of the ways. So you basically do a, a wait, the dog stay at the door, and then you release the dog and it goes, I'm out of here. And you go, think, flip them around, redo it. And I say to the owner and the dog, we'll just all day. Keep launching out the door. I will flip you around and we'll do a sit stay and I'll do this all day. And eventually they'll walk through the door and they're kind of walking through and they'll look at me or the owner and they're like, and they go through the door. Well, you're setting the tone for the walk because it only gets harder when you leave that house. If they can't do that, why would they ever listen to you when they pass that dog they hate on the walk? They wouldn't. I spend a lot of time on that with every <coughs> client who has leisure activity. So yeah, I agree with this myth. And then let's, this is the last one I think. Dogs are natural pack animals with a clear social order. That's the myth. The truth, dogs actually form loose, amorphous, transitory associations with other dogs. All right, don't let anybody act like they know the answer to this question about pack animals, because they don't. The truth is nobody knows this. There are, there are different um, dom groups and, and hierarchies out there. So wolves have one, killer whales have one, baboons have one, chimps have, they're all different by the way, they're all completely different. Chimps have them, baboons have them, macaques have them. The, the, lions have them, but they're, they're, it's more loose. There's all these different ones. And so for us to, so for any trainer to be like, they're not wolves, that's loose, what does she say? Dogs actually form loose, amorphous, transitory associations, right? No, wolf, dogs are not wolves. That's her kind of her point, and she's right. That it's not the same. It doesn't have to be the same. They've, they've gotten, they, they, things have changed over the millions of years that we've been doing this with dogs. But don't, they, no one can act like, ah, they're just, there's, there's no dominance at all. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, but the, the trainers will be like, you need to, they'll tell me, they'll be like, you need to educate yourself. And here's the paper on uh, the Gene Donaldson or someone else wrote on this. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm the one out here with 20 dogs every single day, not having fights. Okay. So the, the, there is something to be said for there being a boss. Okay. With a group of dogs. I'm the boss. Boss goes to the boss. And we don't have fights, ever. And we take aggressive dogs. I, don't, I shouldn't say ever, we've had them and we always need to be careful. But for the most part, we just don't. And it's because there is some hierarchy here. And uh, um, so she's trying to kind of debunk the whole pack thing. That's like the positive reinforcement trainers, their big thing is like they hate Caesar Milan, they hate any of that. And when you say the word, they just, flip out. And uh, so this is her attempt to sort of debunk that, but there's no debunking because the truth is no one knows the answer to what the dog dynamics are. There's no, a paper doesn't mean it's true. Okay. I could argue that me being the boss and Bosco being the boss under me and all the dogs being under that is, is a very hierarchical thing. Excuse me. I don't know. Let's turn this off. Um, all right. Well, I was done anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll talk to you soon.